Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be doing a new part install on my E36 here, my drift car. And uh, that part is gonna be a handbrake because you see here I have the factory set up with a you know extension that I built for it. And uh, you know, it doesn't do terrible, it locks up, but the part that sucks about it is it's not consistent and uh, you gotta retension it every, you know, every other event really to get a good grip on it. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna change this out for a hydro setup and uh, hopefully it works out and hopefully by the end of the video we have uh, a working you know hydraulic e-brake first time ever doing it so i'm kind of learning as i go i tried to buy the parts to make it as you know plug and play as i could so uh, let's go over to the workbench really quick and i'll show you what i got so i wanted to make this as easy of an install as i could so let's kind of go over some of the parts really quick this is the slg the seems legit garage uh you know billet adapter this is one that you bolt to the rear trailing arm and it comes with the willwood um you know brake calipers here they do have pads in them. I didn't buy this kit brand new. I bought it lightly used off of another guy out here. So I paid a little bit less. I think this retails for like 500 plus shipping and tax, maybe a little bit more. I paid about 500 for it. Um, so yeah, this has, you know, basically everything we should need. Only part I'm concerned about is some of the hardware and then this burr. There's like a, a good little burr. If it'll focus in on that, on this from them trying to fit on a TI model and obviously it doesn't fit the TI, so hopefully that doesn't give us any issues. Uh, to go with that, we got the Seams Legit Garage uh, line kit. This has all the adapters and hopefully the correct length lines and stuff. So to fit these, I believe all we have to do is drill two holes in the back to run the lines through, and it gives us all the bulkheads and stuff. Um, I do have a little bit of bag of hardware. Uh, hopefully, again, it is the right hardware and enough to mount everything. And then this is the hydro setup that we want. So this is the Drift HQ as you can kind of see it up there, the Drift HQ Compact. So I like the style of it. It feels pretty, pretty rigid, but I, I, I like that it's not extremely tall. So I did opt for the version that came with the laser cut plate. So this is gonna take probably the longest to get this positioned. Uh, everything else should be a pretty quick bolt-on setup. And then we went with the uh, Willwood Master Cylinder as well as the Drift HQ uh, Billet Reservoir. So um, yeah, it should be plug and play. Hopefully it's my first time installing a Hydro, so I'm hoping it goes smooth, but that's why I tried to buy everything that went together. So let's go ahead, let's get in the car, and uh, yeah, let's get mocking this thing up. We gotta take the center console and stuff out and uh, try and find a good spot for this. All right, so the first step we're gonna have to do is take this whole interior part, but I, uh, I don't remember how to do it, so I gotta relearn. I already started taking little pieces off. So let's get, you know, get your interior part and then we'll move on. Only part that I have to worry about is I have underdash lights in my module is mounted right on the back side of this piece of plastic here. So I just gotta relocate that or, you know, make something work, but I gotta get all this taken apart so I can start mocking it up. All right, so I got everything apart. As you can see, it's kind of a mess in here. Um, it's a little tricky to take this all apart. It's really annoying. So uh, there's a nice little five minute video on YouTube if you need to figure out how to do that. So I've tried mocking this up in a few different spots. And honestly, I'm not too stoked on it um, just cause I wanted to keep as much of the interior as I could. And we're still gonna try and keep what we can, but it's not gonna be as clean, quote unquote, as I was hoping it would be, but that's all right, it's a drift car, not a uh, show car. So I try going up here, but obviously that's just too close to the, um, you know, the dash and then the center console. Uh, I try going over here and trim the console, but that's just too far away from where I sit. That's like, you know, that's like way fully extending my arm. I don't like that. So I think I found the most happy medium compromise is to go more or less right here off of the corner um, right here. So I'm gonna trim the carpet back a little bit because this carpet's really thick and kind of in the way. But I'm thinking if I hang it, kind of contour it a little bit around this edge here, that's like perfect. That's like, you know, I, I can give it a good pull right here and we're not too much in the way. Um, center console get trimmed here. This piece, this center console, I think I'm gonna trim this and I'll have to make new brackets. Uh, to hold it on the sides because this thing this thing's really only held in with this thing here and then a few screws up here So I'm gonna have to cut this whole center out and make new brackets to screw in the sides to over here So it's gonna be a little extra work, but it should look pretty clean when it's done But again, that's you know kind of working with what we got if I were to do this again for my liking I, I, I'd probably gone with a stock style like pull-up hydro um, Especially now that I got used to this location, but it's all right. We're gonna make it work and it's gonna be cool
welded in the secondary support i just stuffed a wet towel down here to absorb anything that way it wouldn't catch anything on fire so i'm gonna leave this folded back while it's still hot but you guys can see the general idea here now there's like no deflection at all so this is never gonna end up tearing on me whereas some guys i see just do it up here but i know that's going to be a failure point later on especially i don't know how much tension is going to be on this once it's bled and stuff so better safe than sorry now i'm going to go ahead the rest of this up until we find start doing the lines and the rear caliper setup the rest of this is just going to be on me to clean it up so i'm going to do my best to do that and i'll show you guys what i come up with to make this hopefully fit back in if it doesn't you know i'll show you guys that too got it mostly put together let me show you here i'm pretty Decently stoked with how it came out. Uh, you know, not the cleanest install, but it should do. So my light uh, switch is just kind of sitting here for my under, under dash neons. Uh, this is mostly put together um, because the center console, obviously I cut this section out and I just have the screws holding it to the metal post from the side like factory. Um, and then to the glove box and then there's one up here, you know, holding it with its other thing. So still got functionality of the window switches this one just kind of be careful you don't press too hard type thing and uh yeah it, it flopped like this before because it was already broken from all this but i do have to remove this stuff so with removing the e-brake stuff here i'm going to take this out and then i'm going to make my own cup holder soon because i don't like that i'm losing my one cup holder that i kind of was able to use but nonetheless it turned out pretty decent now we got room for the fitting here and um i mean yeah once i get all this stuff out of the way you know, we'll have some more room, but overall it doesn't look too bad. Shift boots just kind of resting in here to, you know, kind of cover up some of the wires in here. Overall, looks decent, so now we can get on to the actual, you know, mechanical install of stuff. So with the handbrake itself mounted, uh, let's get back here, let's start to do the caliper stuff. So go ahead and take the wheels off, and then we got to try and basically take everything apart. E-brake stuff, uh, dust shield comes off, and you'll see where it folds up to. taken off now we can finally get to the main part which is bolting the bracket on so the way it mounts is it cups around back here and clings over this piece right here and uh you know bolts in with these bolts and i believe one or two others so uh the key here is you need to have this as clean as possible so go ahead get a wire brush get whatever you need to and clean up the mating points wherever the bracket's going to be touching so let's go grab ours and test fit it so it should be going something Right about here, they are labeled. This is a uh, left hand, so driver's side. And uh, snug fit up in there, and just like that. Got it mocked up. So we got the 10 millimeter up here. This is like a M6. Got our two uh, M8s down here. Um, I am missing the through bolt, the socket head cap screw that comes down into this hole right here through the back side of the trailing arm where your e-brake cable initially came through. So I'm gonna have to stop at a store and pick up one of those, but in the meantime, I can do that off camera. Um, this is just to show you guys me installing it more than anything. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna clean this all up with a wire brush, put some blue Loctite on everything and snug it down nice and good.
Both calipers are bolted up now. This one, I gotta put the pads in still. They just side load into there, slip in, just like little toaster strudels. Um, you just drop them in. Oh. You drop them in just like that, and then the pin goes through it. We're back at it here the next day so we're gonna start things off with taking out the rest of the e-brake assembly up here uh, I think there's just a couple 12 mils holding the rest of the center console I'm just gonna delete that while I'm here because you know it's gonna be hindering the uh, hydro anyway so undo the the nuts holding the cables in here and we should be able to pull the cables all the way out and then like I mentioned before I think the lines go behind under the back seat here so we're gonna take that out uh, that should just lift up and then we can figure out where to drill now there's no direction so I'm gonna have to try and do my best guesstimating um, but it sounds like kind of anywhere that runs into the wheel well here that we can drill through. And looking at what they sent us for the line kit, so they're labeled, we have a 68 inch line, then we have three 28 inch line or 22 inch lines, and they give us a bunch of fittings, but the only thing I noticed that they did not give us is the nuts for the bulkhead. So thankfully, uh, one of my shop mates around here, he had some laying around, so got a little O-ring on that one, but these little nuts on here, yeah, it's supposed to come with those, but for whatever reason mine's lacking them because the bulkheads like this or like this 90 here these are what go through the floor and where your fitting attaches you know hose to hose so yep should have you know depending on which kit you got we got crush washers and a few bulkheads a few banjos and uh yeah again hopefully your kit has these mine just didn't brake lines and everything else out of the way now it's time to do the final hole drilling uh, to run the bulkheads through went ahead and pulled up the carpet thing here uh, there's some foam and sound deadener so I just kind of peeled back what I thought I would need to move there's no instructions either so that's the part where I'm lightly confused on I'm trying to reference photos on the internet um, but generally from what I've seen under the car is the gas tank obviously we know is under the back seat area so Ideally, I'm trying to go somewhere by my light here um, in front of that between the gas tank, like in front of the training arm. So that puts us roughly like here. So basically anywhere I think right next to, um, right in this open area, right here in this corner. So I'm gonna drill a test hole and see what happens. Okay, I just drilled through, left the drill in place, and we see it right there. So let me uh, go up top really quick and show you guys where I drilled. And that gives us perfect access to where we need to go. So if you come into your back seat, you know, get on the trunk deck area here, you're going to notice that there's a, a uh, you know, this angle piece where the metal starts to go up on both sides. So it appears this, basically this whole triangle is an open spot. So I kind of just went a little over basically somewhere in the middle and we're gonna do the same thing right about here so we'll just go through and uh, eh. and sure enough we see light coming through 
So that'll be it. Make this a little bit, a little bit easier on myself. I just went ahead and took my step bit and found where it marks out three eighths and I just taped at that. So I know once I hit the tape to stop. Now that the bulkhead uh, holes are drilled, we're gonna go ahead and start running the line. So the 68 inch one I imagine is the one that comes off the master cylinder and we're gonna need one of the fittings to go off of that as well. So we're gonna take the banjo set up here and uh, we got our crush washers just like that. And we're gonna use those and run that back to uh, the T and then that will be where the back seat is and we will bridge off of this. And now there's four lines here. We have four of these 22 inch lines Obviously one goes to each bulkhead for the holes we just drilled and then one will go from the bottom of that bulkhead under the car to your caliper. So I took off the fitting that came with the master which was this right here. Um, and then I just fed in the banjo bolt with the two crush washers. I rotated it because it is not, an, you know, it doesn't kick it over. I didn't want it coming up and over. So I rotated it over here. The line runs along here and I tucked it underneath the back seat and it'll sit under the cushion. So now I got the T fitting back there and we can start mounting the bulkheads. Now right, we got the bulkheads in, got yourself, you know, find yourself a uh, helping hand. So uh, yeah, bulkheads are tightened down. Let me show you the fittings down below, what they look like, just so you have an idea again for location. So there is, this is passenger side. Sorry if the mic's muffling, I'm smacking on the trunk floor. So for reference on location, it is basically directly above the cup on the uh, uh, trailing arm, so right here, right up there. And the other one is exactly opposite of it, so it will be right up top here. You can see it coming through right there. should suck the fluid in and kind of help with the bench bleeding process, theoretically. It's all just a hearsay though, to be honest. Alright, so I got the fluid moving through, just sat here and pumped the crap out of it, had both outside bleeders open. If you guys don't know on these dual calipers, you got to open, uh, it will bleed both sides of the caliper. Yeah, so. I'm closed. Yep. Cool. So now we're just going to be pumping, holding just like you do traditional brakes, just with a handle instead. I'm happy I'm a righty. Go. Why are you holding the bottle like it's a I'm going to hold it like it's fun. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, so we got everything bled out. I'm going to take it for a quick test drive, maybe, and uh, see if this thing actually works. Well, there you guys have it. The e-brake works. Now it is just like, you know, the factory style. It's not just going to straight lock in most cases going straight. You know, it's just, that's a lot of, you know, forward momentum on the car. So uh, doing the 180s, once you're mid slide, extending corners, all that stuff, it works fine. As you just saw, I was going pretty darn slow and was able to huck most of a 180, you know, to a standstill. And it grabs good. It feels like good pressure. The only thing I am going to change is I'm going to add like a stopper underneath the master. Probably like I might weld it something to the body or I might just make a, you know, take a tube or something and weld a bolt and a nut to it. That way I can act like a master cylinder brace for, you know, per se. Um, otherwise I'm, I'm worried it'll tear the welds later on. But I also wanted to throw in here really quick the, the bolts I was missing. I just found them at Ace. So these are M, M10 one and a half thread pitch. I reached out, didn't get an answer on the length, so I went and got some, I think these are 35 mil length, and they appear to be the right ones. I'm gonna Loctite these, torque everything down, and then that is it. Now I just clean up on the rest of the interior, put the plastic stuff back in the carpet. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. Hopefully this all works out and 
you know, I'm excited for the next Drift event to get to actually use this thing and learn how to, you know, extend some corners with it. So if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel, hopefully you want to stick around, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment, um, you know, get the algorithm going. But yeah, if you found the video useful, let me know because there's not a lot of, uh, you know, standalone uh, hydro installs on, for whatever reason, on this chassis on YouTube. So uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. So do your love for you about the rest and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out.